so today we are going to discuss the competency number 10.12 which is shoulder joint so agar long question aata hai shoulder joint pe to usko kaise attempt karna hai wo hum yahan pe discuss karte hain and it is the most movable joint of the body and the most common joint of the dislocate then second heading would be the type it is a ball and socket variety of synovial joint and multi axial joint then the articular surface so the it has two articular surfaces one is the proximal articular surface which is formed by the glenoid cavity whereas the distal articular surface it is formed by the one third of the head of the humerus so the both articular surfaces are covered by the hilum type of the cartilage then comes to the ligaments so we have to write only the names and we'll discuss about the capsular ligament only so the ligaments are the capsular ligament the glenohumeral ligament the coracohumeral ligament the transfer humeral ligament and the glenoid labrum now the next heading would be the capsular ligaments so capsular ligament is a fine thin fibrous sheet which extend from the glenoid cavity to the humerus so it has attachment proximally and distal attachment so the proximally it is attached to the margin of the glenoid cavity and enclose the glenoid labrum and the supraglenoid tubercle whereas distally it attached to the anatomical neck of the humerus so the synovial membrane lines the inner surface of the capsule now we have to draw this diagram which showing the ligament of the shoulder joint so the next heading would be the bursa of the shoulder joint we have, so first we have the subscapular bursa as the name suggests it light lies bit below to the subscapularis muscle and uh, the neck of the scapula it communicate with the joint cavity the second bursa is the infraspinatus bursa it lies between the tendon of the infraspinatus muscle and the joint so it sometime communicate with the joint cavity whereas the third bursa is subacromial bursa it lies between the coracoacromial arch and the tendon of the supraspinatus muscle सो so, ये अकेला वर्षा है जो जॉइंट कैविटी के साथ कम्युनिकेट नहीं करता इन्फ्रास्पाइनेटस वर्षा है वो ओकेजनली कम्युनिकेट करता है बट द सब स्केपुलर वर्षा इज ऑलवेज कम्युनिकेट विद द जॉइंट कैविटी सो दीज ऑल दीज थ्री वर्षा प्रिवेंट द फ्रिक्शन ऑफ द टेंडन विद द बोन्स नाउ सेपरेट क्वेश्चन भी आता है शॉर्ट नोट्स पे और ड्रॉ द अवेलेबल डायग्राम ऑफ द रिलेशन ऑफ द शोल्डर जॉइंट पे भी क्वेश्चन आता है so in this diagram we have to draw all the relation of the shoulder joint i have mentioned only the text over here so uh, in the in between the we have the glenoid cavity the superior relations are the deltoid lateral fiber the supraspinatus muscle the coracohumeral arch and the subacromial bursa whereas anteriorly it is related by the subscapularis muscle short head of the biceps coracobrachialis and the deltoid whereas inferiorly it is uh, related with the long head of the triceps axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral vessels whereas the posteriorly it is related with the infraspinatus teres minor muscle and the deltoid the posterior fiber so the next heading would be the blood supply of the shoulder joint so we have to write down only the name of the vessels which supply to the shoulder joint these are the anterior circumflex humeral vessels it include both artery and veins the posterior circumflex humeral vessels the subscapular vessels the suprascapular vessels now comes to the nerve supply so it is supplied by the three kind of nerves which are the axillary nerve the musculocutaneous nerve and the suprascapular nerve now most important is movement of the shoulder joint is pe short notes aata hai alag se bhi aur agar long question aata hai so we have to write the name of the movements and the muscle which is responsible for the particular movement so the first movement is flexion the flexion uh, occur due to the clavicular head of the pectoralis major and the anterior fiber of deltoid muscle the second action is extension which is due to the latissimus dorsi and the mus posterior fiber of deltoid muscle the adduction is due to the pectoralis major muscle teres major latissimus dorsi So these all must three muscles are related to the bicipital groove. The next uh, action would be the abduction, fifteen to ninety degree 
abduction is due to the deltoid muscle whereas 90 to 180 degree is related to the trapezius and the serratus anterior muscle so the medial rotation is main muscle is subscapularis muscle whereas the later rotation is due to by the teres minor infraspinatus and the posterior fiber of the deltoid muscle the last action is circumduction it is the conical movement of the shoulder joint and it is the combination of the all movements so the shoulder joint has more mobility at the cost of stability so some factor which provide the stability to the shoulder joint we have to discuss over here if the long question would be asked so these are the rotator cuff then the coracoacromial arch and the long head of the biceps and the glenoid labrum so in the clinical aspect we have to write down some clinical aspect of shoulder joints these are the dislocation of the shoulder which is commonly on the inferior side due to the least support or it can it can damage the axillary nerve the second would be the frozen shoulder means the inflammatory may cause the shrinkage or adhesion of the shoulder joint capsule it result in restriction of all the movements and the joint stiffness the next would be the rotator cuff tear the bursitis and the shoulder tip pain 